Welcome back to Allison Customs Project Car TV. I'm Jeff Allison, and thank you for watching. Right, we're back again with our with our circuit that we built. Um, five amp fuse in line, and I've rearranged how the meter is set up. We're using the amperage function, and we're measuring amperage across our circuit. So the ground wire is still hooked to the battery. This is the circuit. Rather than the positive wire being hooked to the battery, it's hooked to one side of our multimeter. The other side of our multimeter is hooked to the battery, so the, the multimeter is now in the circuit. With the switch off, we're drawing zero amps on our system. However, once we turn the switch on, get the light to light up, we're drawing about 0.06 amps of, uh, of amp, or 0.06 amps through our circuit to keep that light and the little LED lit and the resistance on our circuit. Now that's all good and that's all normal. That's how this circuit should work. However, I've added a white wire here you can see. What happens when we if the white wire represents the ground or maybe this switch and this light are in your dash and this is this plug is under our dash somewhere and I left this little test port here just so we could do some of these different uh, scenarios. What happens if uh, the red wire after the fuse, we're going to talk about everything being protected by the fuse here. So the red wire after the fuse, this orange wire that comes out of the plug, what happens if it gets chafed and rubs against the chassis or the back of the dash, some piece of metal that's grounded. So that's what the white wire represents. We're going to plug it in. I'm going to show you the fuse here. You may be able to see the little spark. All right, so the spark, or the fuse popped lights went out, our amperage draw goes to zero because the fuse is popped, and we have a short to ground now. Most of us get in the car, we play with the switch once or twice, and we go, huh, that doesn't work. We go to our fuse, maybe we get out our test, our test light or our multimeter the way we've been testing before. We check our fuse and we go, look at there, our fuse is burned out. And so then we pop a new, we take the fuse, take the old one out, sure enough, we look at it, we can see a little burn mark or a space in it, throw it aside. We go get another 5 amp fuse. I know it's a little different color, but it's uh, just a different brand. Pop the new fuse in and it immediately pops again. Look at that. Still, now we can do that all day wasting 10, 15 cents a piece. Some of us get really clever. We go get a 30 amp fuse and we're going to say, well, you know, if the other one wouldn't work, this one will work. And I'm going to put this fuse in and you can see it popped instantly as well. So. Now we've wasted who knows how much money in fuses, and we still don't have a, a circuit that's functioning. So rather than continue to throw fuses at it, trying to figure out why it burned out, it's time to test for a ground for a short to ground. Okay, so now we need to test for this ground. So I've added a went and got another multimeter, and I'm leaving this one in the circuit just to keep things similar. What we've got is. Uh, we can't keep putting fuses in this unit because it's just going to keep popping them. We've already tried all the way to a 30 amp fuse and it pops. So we know we have a problem with our circuit. So we need to get the power source out of the circuit so that we can then test our circuit and we're going to use a continuity tester to do this. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to disconnect our ground and our, our battery from our ground and our positive terminal. Now because our chassis and our battery cable would normally be, you know, they're always hooked together. We're just taking the battery out of the loop. Okay guys, so we've taken the battery out of the circuit and then now we need to test using our continuity feature. We need to test the circuit with no power on it so that we can find the source. So what we're going to do is we're going to hook our black cable up to our uh, to our ground, to our battery cable, the ground, the black cable, the negative side of our battery cable. And we're going to be hunting for a, ground, a short to ground because that's the most likely suspect in a car. And what we're going to do first is we're going to check and see if we have continuity. We, sh we have continuity here with our two connections. And we should have continuity, like if we chased it all the way over to the light bulb and we went to our ground, um, we have continuity again. So right now I've got the circuit turned off, switches down. We have continuity across, across the grounds. So we know the ground is good. 
but we need to figure out whether the positive is touching the ground at any place. So we're going to go back to our fuse block and we're going to check both the source side, so the side that goes back to the battery or wood if the battery is in line, and we got no continuity there. That's a good thing. Now we're going to check the other side, and we have, unfortunately, we have really good continuity. It's going to zero. We have a short somewhere between the fuse and where the circuit comes all the way back to the battery. So that means our positive battery, positive wire is touching ground somewhere. We know where it is, but we're going to hunt for it. So the next trick is to go, well, is it before or after? We know it's after the fuse. So is it before or after this junction block? Okay, so we're going to test our connector here. And I don't have the right probe on here to fit in there, so I'm just going to slide this in and test it. And here we have continuity here, so we know it's still shorting after the fuse, all the wires all the way to the connector. But is it on which side of the connector does it quit on? So we're going to unplug the connector and we're going to test it again. And the continuity has gone away. But yet when it was plugged in, we have the short. So we can go in here. We know that it's not on that side. We can test the probe here. We know we have a problem from the connector on. So we're going to plug this back in to keep the wire, the power, or the uh, continuity going. And then we're going to test our circuit on this side. Right now we don't have anything at the, at the light, but the switch is off. If we turn it on, we still have the same problem. So we know the problem is after our connector, before you get back to the battery. As we're wandering along these wires, hopefully eventually we find the chafe, we pull the plug, we fix it, fix it, uh, cover it up, whatever we need to do to fix the chafe and get it away from the ground. Now we can come back and we start testing our circuit again. We, hit, we go back to the fuse block and we have no continuity on either side now. That tells us we have no problem with the ground. We can hit our test port. We have no problem with the ground there or those, that's the ground side of the switch or at the positive side of the switch. When the switch comes on, there's no problem at the light bulb. We fixed our ground, we sort, we've chased it through the system, narrowing it down each time, knowing it has to be on the positive side until we found the shorted wire. Now we can go back. We've gotten rid of the, the ground problem. We can go back, put in a new fuse. Always use the proper fuse. Don't, uh, don't put a 30 amp or a five amp should be because you, you're only gonna risk burning up wires. And we can test our circuit one more time, make sure everything's, so now the power goes through the system, we should have no ground or no continuity through the ground circuit on the positive side. Everything works as it should. We can then go back, put the battery back into the system, and we're back to zero load, turn it on or switch on, we're back up to 0.6 amps. We've solved the problem, we found our short and corrected it. Hope that helps you guys. Hope it makes sense to how you start chasing that circuit down, and uh, see you again real soon. As is always, uh, Appreciate all of my viewers and uh, all the comments I get. If you have questions, you have ideas, if you want to see me do something specific, please get a hold of me or send, leave me a comment. I try to answer them all. I'm not, uh, I don't get on them right away sometimes, but I do try and get back to everybody on them. And uh, I'll be glad to take suggestions to try and figure out things that you guys want to see. So get thanks for watching and have a great day. Thanks for watching Allison Customs Project Car TV. Like us on Facebook and check us out at allisoncustomsonline.com.